Good morning, everyone, and welcome to The Morning Show. Good morning, Andy. Good morning, Bart. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am okay. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas. That's part of my issue is I have yet to Christmas shop. At all? Yeah, mm -hmm. at all. But good news. I'll be doing that this week. <laughs> well, I hope you do it before... Friday. I hope so too. Uh, right now it is a cold morning, 23 degrees. Our wind chill is 16, cloudy today, then sunshine this afternoon. But the National Weather Service is warning a major winter storm is headed our way. The Great Lakes region could be the victim of a bomb cyclone this what? weekend. Yes, the uh, barometric pressure drops dramatically, the temperature drops, moisture moves in, winds pick up. And we could see overnight, Thursday night, four to seven inches accumulation. Friday, another eight inches. It's still a bit early to accurately predict snowfall and wear in Michigan, but it looks like the uh, entire uh, Great Lakes region will be impacted, and that includes travel. So make plans accordingly. Things should start getting messy Thursday night and overnight and into Friday, all day Friday and into Saturday, Christmas Eve and cold, windy, snowy on Christmas Day. Well, while you're at it, there was an earthquake in California this yes. morning too. So yes. I don't know if we have a slide on that. Uh, so yeah, be careful out there for your holiday parties mm -hmm. and travel. And uh, yeah, if you have stuff to do toward the end of the week, maybe you should do it at the beginning of the week. Mm -hmm. I um, predict on um, Thursday people will be flooding the supermarkets. Oh yes, the supermarkets will be busy, although I've noticed they've already been busy. Yeah. That's the one place that you can for sure find people. Um, but yeah, don't, uh, don't wait till the last minute to go to the uh, grocery store. As soon as, th as soon as today people will be. be yeah, busy. for sure. Mm -hmm. um, my daughter in her class, they're doing a secret Santa in their uh, their classroom, and it's a it's a wonderful idea. I would like to do it here next year. Mm. I'll tell you the concept. Okay. Okay. Random draw. Uh -huh. It's easy. Secret Santa, uh -huh. and uh, there's a you fill out this paper of all of your likes and interests and things <laughs> like that, and you have a fifteen dollar budget, and you have and then each day. Uh, you put that gift on that person's desk, and at the end of the fourth day, it's a big reveal to see what you, who you had. And I thought we should do that here. Don't you think? So you get four presents. You get four gifts. Totaling the, the total value of all four is $15. Well, <laughs> that's what it's supposed to be. But uh, Ella got in my car yesterday, and um, we were trying to figure out who it was because it was elaborate, very oh, wow. elaborate. There was a box with a note. And then you opened up another box and there were three wrapped presents in there. Wow. I know. So um, it was nicer than what Ella got her secret <laughs> Santa. So back to the store. Back to the store <laughs> you go. No, um, but I think we should do that here. That would be fun. Plus, it's 15 bucks. We can, uh, we can all do that in the building, I think. It's a busy uh, week at the stores. Uh, retailers are reporting uh, sales above last year, both online and in person. Mm. And I was out a little bit yesterday uh, shopping. Yeah. And it, it was, I would say, moderate. Did you buy me anything? I did. Really? Yeah. Wow. How about that? You had to buy four. No. <laughs> yeah. I'm very easy. I am uh, very brand specific. It's, I'm probably one of the easiest people to shop for. Check, if you're going to a store, if you're traveling some distance, go to a store, check their hours. Because, oh, good idea. Uh, a lot of the stores are uh, closing early. Talbot's at Briarwood closed at 2.30 one day last week. 2.30? 2.30, not, no people. Sometimes Brandon and I go shopping at Talbot's. Yeah, it's a great store. <laughs> it's a wonderful, Women wonderful love. store. Mm -hmm. You know what we got? We got a new toaster. Has this ever happened to you? We get new toasters frequently. Okay, so we don't. Because they haven't been able to make a toaster that works 
well. Well, we had one oh. that worked really well and it's gone. And now we have a new one and we went from a four slot to a two slot. Ooh. And I burnt a couple bagels getting used to the new temperature settings. <laughs> so also the slot is thinner. So I'll notice that it will burn the half of the bagel, the, like the outside half. And mm -hmm. I don't like that. So. Mm -hmm. Remember the uh, years we used to get those Wolferman's English muffins that were mm. giant muffins? They'd always burn They'd burn and get caught. You couldn't get them out. Yeah. Winter uh, officially begins tomorrow. <laughs> Great timing for a winter storm. The winter solstice at 448 on Wednesday, and then we'll have the shortest day of the year. Shortest amount of daylight. But the good news, after tomorrow, days will start getting longer, and we'll have more more daylight, more, more Am I the only, I think, like, parents are freaking out. You know, their kids are in school this entire week. Do you know that? It's insane. I know. Well, it's messing everything up. <laughs> Brandon told me his, his son has school on Friday. Wow. Are you kidding me? So I think it's kind of thrown a wrinkle into a lot of the holiday happenings, whether that's shopping or parties or things like that. I think a lot of things have been, have to be pushed back because kids are in school mm -hmm. till two days before Christmas, which is, I don't like it. Some people do a uh, after Christmas party. I think we're going to see that. Yeah, I I've never been a giant fan of that, but I do understand there's certain businesses that uh, enjoy that because they're so busy during the holidays. I remember the uh, office bar, it's where production realty is now on Jackson Street. I do. The office bar was known for a number of things. <laughs> including having a shot ski. Remember the shot ski? Didn't you see when we had, I had someone on last week and we did a shot ski with the candle? I were you not that. watching? Oh, you were out of town, I sorry, of town. sorry. Yeah, so, I do remember it. Brandon Bre and I lined up on that once. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. yeah. Good so in uh, Breckenridge, Colorado, hundreds of skis were connected in chain and glued, uh, <laughs> they glued shot glasses to the skis. So now they have the record uh, of the longest shot ski in well, good. Breckenridge, Colorado. Oh, look at that and fella. That was, I wonder if he took that. He ripped the shot, shot glass right off the ski, I bet. Looks like a wild town. It sure does. Looks mm -hmm. fun. Yep. Did you buy a Christmas tree yet? <laughs> I've talked to people who are putting their trees. No. They still haven't put their trees up. What? Yeah. I just yesterday. And no, we do. We were Thanksgiving. Yeah, the Christmas tree oh. is up by the after, right after Thanksgiving. Sometimes even before, and we're good. But yeah, I, I've noticed yeah. driving by some Christmas tree places that there are still some Christmas trees available. Mm -hmm. So, if you haven't bought your Christmas tree, you should probably do that today. Yeah, and the National Christmas Tree Association is reporting prices this year are up 10 percent over last year. So be prepared. In uh, South Portland, Maine, the local Rotary Club's average price is seventy dollars for a for what? Christmas for a tree. spruce? Uh, didn't specify. Fur? Yeah. Um, you know, I like big gifts for Christmas. So I have a little trivia for you. What is the largest Christmas gift ever given? Um, Jesus gave the world to us. <laughs> the Statue of Liberty, ah. given by the uh, French to the United States. So. That's it. That's that was answer. a nice gift. And it was a very nice gift. Large was, gift. And because of that, we should be, we should be thanking France. For that gift? We should be nicer to France. Well, I mean, who gives I someone mean, a gift like who that? Who gives a gift like that? And did we give a comparable gift in return? I doubt we gave a comparable gift in return. Uh -huh. um, while we're talking about Christmas, you know what bothers me? <laughs> um, if I get a bunch of gifts that are so nicely wrapped, but then I open them and it's like uh, peanut brittle or something. Don't wrap <laughs> stuff like that and put bows on it and then have me open it and have it be a, uh, a sticky notepad and brittle, okay? I think I'm opening <laughs> up uh, a watch or something. Does that make sense to you? You think the packaging doesn't equal the gift? 
Yes, I've always had this problem, as <laughs> yeah. you know. Always had this problem. Because when I was a kid, I used to unwrap the presents based on how nicely they were wrapped, <laughs> thinking that the highest dollar amount and thing I wanted the most was in that nicely wrapped mm -hmm. gift. And I still fall for it. I still fall for it. What about gifts that um, give you a time commitment or a date locked on your calendar? Do you like those? <laughs> <laughs> I guess you do. I guess well, you do like those. If they, I, I mean, we have we got a gift uh, last year. It was for a specific day. Ah, it stresses me out. We couldn't. We were already busy that day. It stresses so me out. Yeah. Stresses me and out. And we wanted to be, you know, grateful. And, yeah. and we were, but we couldn't use right. it. We already had. How about like a? Uh, yeah, that that one's difficult for me. Mm -hmm. I, I've given people a gift of, hey, here you go, congratulations, Merry Christmas. You'll be busy this day. Mm -hmm. So. I don't think I'm gonna do that this year, though. Gift cards. Uh, do you know that the majority of uh, companies that have gift cards, they uh, average about 70% uh, of, of the cards are used. Last night, your mom and I went to dinner, specifically chose a restaurant that we had a gift card to. Expired. We forgot, we forgot to use the gift card. At the restaurant? Yeah. Did you have the gift card? Oh, yeah. Jeez. So no, that's had, just a waste of money. Someone had the gift card on them. <sighs> it wasn't me. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, the police blotter this morning, uh, Jackson Sheriff's deputies found a stolen car that had been reported uh, missing the day before. Mm -hmm. Good news. Um, so they um, charged the guy. They found the guy receiving and concealing stolen property. Uh, and unlawfully driving away an automobile. The vehicle was returned to the owner along with his dog. Ah. The guy st stole the car and the dog was in it. I don't know what's worse. Well, I do know what's worse, the dog. Uh, obviously, that's awful. East Prospect Street, this happened. Well, hopefully that person will spend the holidays in jail for trying to ruin, ruin someone else's life. That doesn't seem very nice. Hey, I've got some scores. Should I get to them? That'd I'll do great. that. Mm -hmm. Extreme Dodge, bringing you our scoreboard. Thank you very much, Extreme. They have a great new oil change building. Maybe get the oil change before the storm hits. That is uh, my recommendation. We'll get things started on the girls' side. Girls basketball, Columbia Central 55, Michigan Center 30. But what about this? Zoe Baum. 34 points, school record on the road. Zoe outscored Michigan Center herself. Hmm. Didn't she just last week break the record for most points? I think she had 1,000 points a thousand or something. Points. I'm not sure, but 34 points. That was two weeks ago. Yeah, so 34 points. Congratulations, that's a school record. I never scored 34 points in a game. That's, that's unbelievable. That is awesome. Uh, it was Dexter over Grass Lake. Dexter came in and humbled Grass Lake a little bit. Napoleon, 41, Hanover, 30. Napoleon, 5-2. and two. They only had seven wins last year, so uh, congratulations There's to them. There's some football players on the basketball team, too. This is, I'm talking girls basketball oh, girls right basketball. now. But yes, you're right, you are right on the boys' side. Um, okay, let's flip it to boys. East Jackson, 61. Whitmore Lake, 51. Homer. A, I would call that a giant win over Vandercook Lake. And then Concord, that's a nice win over Sturgis. A couple of bowling scores for you. Vandercook Lake, they beat Addison in boys and girls bowling yesterday. Here's what's coming up on deck for tonight. We got oh, boys wow. basketball, CC at Grass Lake. Jackson's on the road at Holt. Jackson Christian is home. Homer at Northwest. Springport at Waldron and Western at Tecumseh. And girls basketball, Northwest at Columbia. Jackson and Lumen Christie will play at the Leslie tournament. That's the consolation game. Noah Baker will be out there to get highlights. That's the only time Jackson and Lumen Christie are going to play this year in girls basketball. And then we've got competitive cheer, bowling, and swimming. And that's all coming up on deck tonight. Thanks to uh, Extreme Dodge. Thanks to Jeff Steers, Noah Baker, our sports department. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Busy week, uh, but it winds down after uh, today and tomorrow.
You know this, uh, I've got a picture of a, a football field at the University of Michigan. Really? And it's not the big house. It's, have you ever seen this field? You've driven by it many times. I have, yes. Elbow Field, and it's where the uh, marching band practices, yeah. and they use it for other things. Mm -hmm. Well, the new president of U of M, Santa Ono, announced that they're going to build a new residence and dining hall on this field. I'm sorry? Yes. Like eliminating it? Yes. What? Yeah. They claim they're going to build a new uh, marching band field over, you know, the lumber yard that's over there on uh, yeah, yeah. Street? Yeah, I parked at that lumber yard. Is, yeah. that, is that done? It's gone. So they're going to build the uh, new football field over there. That's amazing. What is the name of that lumber yard? Fingerly? Guy C. Fingerly? Guy C. Lee? Fingerly. Fingerly Lumber. Is Guy C. Lee, that's in the Outer Banks. Guy C. Lee. <laughs> uh, fingerling, fingerly Lumber. I think that's what it is. I think so, and it's, it's out of business. Probably not try and say it anymore. No. So, goodbye to that. Um, one thing I didn't mention, uh, the Shot Clock Classic coming up next week. JTV will have live coverage of five basketball games presented by Avenue Auto. We'll be out at Spring Arbor. Again, the Shot Clock Classic. We'll start live at 1045, and then the coverage just goes all day. Yours truly will be on the call for the 5 p.m. game. Oh, wow. Onstead versus Olivet. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. So, yeah, Battle check out all the games here Battle on. Battle of the O's. That's right, Battle of the O's. Yep, very good. Should be a great time. And then the Nightcap Western against Jackson. Should be a lot of fun. All live, all day long. All GTV. live, yep, should be, uh, should be a great time. Today's show is brought to you by Homesteady. Do you have projects that you need taken care of around the house? Eyesores. 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 Yeah, everyone's Eyesores. got an eyesore at their yeah. house. Look up, look down. That's the first place your guests look. The baseboards. <laughs> the baseboards. Oh, is it? The baseboards. Yep, yeah, they do. I, yeah. Do you look in people's houses? And, mm -mm. No, 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 me neither. Do you look in medicine cabinets? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't either. I don't even like going to other people's houses, let alone looking in their medicine cabinets. So Who's on the show today? We've got a great show. We're going to get things started with Josh Smith from Western Schools right after this break.